Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace and today is Monday, October 28th. This is a podcast about knitting books, baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do all day, every day, whenever I can, at any opportunity. Yes. Um, <laughs> if you like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there, or all of the above, or none of the above. I will not be offended either way. Um, all of the things that I will be talking about hopefully will be in the show notes. If I forget to mention anything in the show notes, please let me know. But that will be on my blog, so if you're on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below, or if you are on uh, my blog already, then everything should already be there. In addition to that, I work at a yarn store. It's called The Modern Skein. It's in Montgomery, Texas, and I will leave all the social media, website, all that jazz in the show notes. So if you would like to come check us out in person, we would love to meet you and hang out with you if you are local or visiting. Or if that is not possible, then there is an online store that you can check us out at. So that is very fun. Um, I said that all very quickly and I'm out of breath because talking fast. Today is just a tired day, everyone. Have you ever, ever have those days where like you know that there's no reason for you to be sleepy or tired, but you just are? And so you don't really want to do anything, though you need to do things like laundry, because <laughs> that's important, and stuff like that. Is it just me? Or are there other people out there? Because today that is me. Today that is me. Um, I do not have very much knitting to show you, unfortunately. Well, that's not true. I have a lot of knitting to show you, but contained in two projects. How about that? That's that's a more accurate statement. Uh, let me reach over and grab my tea. This is a very big cup. It's also cold. Like, it's not necessarily cold outside, but for whatever reason, I am cold, and it just makes me sleepy. <laughs> Someone's probably going to comment and be like, you're probably getting sick, and it's like, I don't really want that. I hope it's not that. Pretty sure it's not that, but who knows. Um, so... <sighs> little knitting, whatever just we're gonna go with it and see where it takes us this might not be a long episode and if it's not I apologize if it is yay <laughs> um, I'm not gonna worry about it so without further ado if you would like to grab something tasty to drink something to snack upon something to or whether your beverage be hot or cold wherever you are. I've seen on Instagram some places that it's snowing pretty heavily. In a lot of wide range rate places, I'm not sure where exactly, but there's a lot of states being covered in snow right now. And I'm slightly jealous, but also I don't like driving in snow. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, so whether it be hot or cold wherever you are, Play in your beverage accordingly, whatever you would prefer to do. Or if you have laundry to fold, please do that because your to-do list will thank you and then you'll have some free time later to maybe knit or something. That would be wonderful. I'm sure you would love that. Um, and you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. Ah, so good. So everybody. Everybody, everybody. What to start with? The logical answer would be knitting, right? That would be the logical answer. But for some reason, I'm just like, what? How do I do this? I podcast? What do I do? I, I don't know. I don't know. That's me today. So, I have knitting. Do I have books? I don't know. Do I have books? I don't think so. I have books? Nah, I don't know. Baking? Yeah, I have baking. That's good. That's something. And then just general knitting talk. 
So, fun times. Okay, so let's let's have a more positive attitude, shall we? Let's gain some energy. Let's have a little pep talk. We're going to do great. It's going to be a good podcast. It'll be fine. Regardless of the length, regardless of the amount of knitting that I have to show you, we will rejoice in the knitting progress that I have made. We will rejoice in the fact that both of these items are very close to being done. We will also acknowledge that I don't have my rings on, and that's not normal, so normally I have rings on. Um, <laughs> um, so yes, pep talk over. Was that encouraging? I hope that was, let's see if that was encouraging to me. I don't know. But anyway, so I've made a lot of progress on this one. My last test knit for the year for a while. Um, this is Santa's Workshop by Meg of Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. Um, it is a Christmas sweater, which is very wonderful. Um, I have done some modifications to make the fit better for me. And I have also changed the sleeve a little bit in regards to how it was knit because I was running out of yarn. Um, I didn't think I was going to run out of yarn, but I was. <laughs> so that became an issue, and that issue was remedied and has been fixed, and it's no longer a problem because the sleeves are finished. And in fact, the whole body is also finished. Everyone... This is a finished Christmas sweater. The only thing that is not done is the button bands and the sticking part. You know. But at this point, having just wanting to get it done so I can wear it, the idea of sticking is really not that intense to me. I just really want to get it done so it can be done and I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's me and the Christmas sweater. <laughs> um, I use Knit Picks palette for all of this. The green is ivy, the white is white, and the red is pimento. Um, I'm very happy with my stripes. They are not full length sleeves, um, because of where I had to divide for the sleeves. They're a little bit lower so the stripes start kind of like around here like mid it's very hard to tell with my shirt but it's like mid bicep and then it comes down to like right where this mm, my sleeve ends so staking will be happening this week this week I will be preparing this sweater so I can stake it at work on Wednesday I realize that this is coming up on Wednesday, or this is going out on Wednesday, so if you are seeing this in the morning, you should come watch me seek. If you can. If you want to. You don't have to. My feelings will not be hurt. <laughs> but if you want to, and you can, please do. Please do. Um, but if not, there will be videos, there will be pictures, I'm sure, so. Do not fret, for there will be documentations of all forms, all places. But yes, so this is almost done. Almost done. I appreciate so many of the, like, the comments last week were amazing. So amazing. So thank you to each and every one of you for your comments on the buttons, the comments on the word situation with Sam, and then also what you call the thing that you put your groceries in. It's not a buggy. We have decided that. It's not a buggy. The Whether it's a coupon or a coupon was kind of divided in half, which I thought was very interesting. Um, I will still say coupon because that is what I say. But if you say coupon, more power to you. I will know what you mean. <laughs> but to me it is a coupon. Um, but I thought that was a very funny little experiment, and I thought the comments were quite wonderful. So thank you so much for all your wonderful input and feedback. The button suggestions were also very wonderful, and I really appreciate you taking the time to offer me a suggestion. Um, before I was going to be striping the sleeves, a lot of people suggested finding candy cane buttons, which I really, really, really loved the idea of. Like so much so. 
But then I had to stripe the sleeves because I was running out of yarn. And so I think because the sleeves are striped, I might not want candy cane buttons. I don't know. Um, someone, let me see. Um, I actually got a picture of one, and the picture is no longer available, which is sad, but this is from Tibbers1996 on Instagram, so thank you very much. This is very kind of you. But she sent me some pictures, or a picture of some sparkly buttons that she had found um, at her craft store, which would be amazing. Like, sparkles. I love sparkles. Not too much, but I do love a good sparkle. Um... So that would be a really fun idea. Um, there was a discussion. Um, I was talking with Julie, who also works at the store, about um, either white or green buttons. Now that my sleeves are striped, it was discussed that the green would blend in very well and just kind of let all this speak for itself. But the white would kind of give the the impression of like gingerbread buttons like gingerbread men buttons I guess that they have on the cookie so they look like they have buttons very self-explanatory I'm sure you all knew what I was talking about the first time <laughs> um so I don't really know or red white green or red clearly we have a very contained color palette <laughs> um but that's the point. This is what I wanted for my Christmas sweater. I'm trying real hard not to get my ends on my teeth because there are some dangly ends here. Um, yes. I will not be like wet blocking this. I will be steaming it to like straighten out all my stitches and just make it lay nice and flat. And then I will be doing the cutting. I will be picking up the button bands before that. Sorry, my earrings are caught in my shawl. Um, and then doing the cutting, hopefully on Wednesday. So when you when you see this, I might have already done the cutting. In which case, you can potentially go to my Instagram and see if there are pictures up. I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. You will have to wait and see. I make grand promises and sometimes they don't always work and for that I am very sorry, but I would like to get this done as soon as possible because I'm ready to move on to bigger and better things, you know? Because there are so many things I want to cast on so badly. Real, real badly. <laughs> and like... I know that I have plenty of things on the needles right now. Like, I do not need to cast anything else on. If I, when I finish these two things, there's a good chance something's going to get cast on, though, because that is going to be a reward. I deserve that. I worked hard on both of these things, you know, for sure. Um, what I cast on, I don't know. I have many an option. That doesn't require getting any yarn. I already have the pattern. It's literally just finding the needles. Which after this, two, two sixes will become available. Which I knit a lot on sixes. So there's a good chance that that would work out pretty well. Time for a tea break. Fold some socks. Do something like that. Pet the cat or the dog. Or what animal you might have with you. Also, okay, quick side note before we get into the next thing. Um, I finally stopped procrastinating, everybody. <laughs> I finally stopped procrastinating, and I finally put together the Christmas list for everybody, and I finally have the list, like, it's done. 
and I have a bag full of Michael's stuff sitting over there. Like, it's over there. It's ready to get started with. Right? Like, what? I did good dividing things up, so not everyone, everyone is getting a handmade gift, which I think that's good, because you know what? I've got to set boundaries. It's good to say no to making gifts all the time. Right? It will save my sanity a little bit if I do not make gifts for every single person that is getting a gift this year. Because that would be so many and I don't know what I would do for everybody. So we're not going to worry about it. And in fact I have plenty of other ideas of things that I don't make for other people that need gifts. So it's great. There's going to be a lot of repetitiveness. Um, I know that some of these people who are getting these repetitive, gi repetitive gifts will be watching this podcast. You might know who you are. I don't know. You might. So, I don't know how to show that <laughs> without being very obvious what it is and you finding out. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Mama, it is you. What do you think, Mama? I will text you about this later. How about that? We will have a discussion. <laughs> do you mind knowing what you are getting for Christmas? <laughs> because it is podcast content, and I know you watch the podcast. <laughs> um, but it was fun going to Michael's. I was really good about like making a very concise list. It was very like specific. I knew how many balls of yarns I needed. I keep doing this. I don't know why. Um, I needed to get some thread because one of my favorite pairs of jeans has a hole in it and I did not have any thread to fix them. And now I do and now I can fix my favorite pair of jeans and that's really wonderful. But anyway, that's beside the point. I made a very concise list. It was a list that was like not gonna cost an arm and a leg because yay coupons. Coupons. And yay Michaels. Um, and I say all this because Sam was coming with me, and so I knew that I needed to, like, not dilly-dally. I needed to know what I needed. I needed to not, like, overbuy and get way too much than I needed, so I did pretty good. I did pretty good. So, and we also found some things, excuse me, for some other stuff, like we're having a Halloween thing with the youth group that Sam leads. Um, or Sam does most leading, I just make food sometimes. Um, <laughs> and so there were like Halloween sprinkles that were super on sale, so it was perfect. There's also, their Christmas decorations are also super on sale. And it's like, okay, well how can we say no? I, like, it's a very pretty garland. It will hang in our living room. And I'm very excited. And I feel like there's some other things that we got. But anyway, it was a very productive... Michael's trip. It didn't take too long. I knew what I needed. It was great. I avoided the whole planner section altogether because I knew that would be a rabbit hole that I would go down and not be able to come out without getting like a tube of washi tape or something like that. So I avoided it because yes. I did look at their buttons. They had practically no buttons that were really worth looking at. So that's okay. Another time. Another time. We are going to College Station this coming Saturday, and the, um, is it Michael's? I think it's Michael's. The craft store that was, like, literally three minutes from where I lived when I was in college, um, has the best button selection, and I'm very excited. So maybe I can get Sam to take me there to look at some buttons for this sweater. That would be super convenient. I think we can make that work. So, yes. The point of that whole rant and rave was that my Christmas stuff has all been planned and all I have to do is knit things now. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot about this other thing. Oh my goodness, I have to find a picture. I also have a new phone and I'm so, so happy 
everybody. I had not had a new phone in forever. There was a lot of hullabalooing about getting this phone, and it finally worked out. And I'm so happy. Okay, so my little baby nephew, his name is Jonas. He will be two in February. We share the same birthday month. He is he was born two days after my birthday. It's very wonderful. I love sharing a birthday month with my little baby nephew who is the cutest thing in the entire world. And I figured out what I'm going to make him for Christmas. Because he loves stuffed animals very much like his father or my brother who also loves stuffed animals. Um, but he, <laughs> Jonas likes stuffed animals because he's almost two. Um, and Jeff's likes them because they're just funny. Anyway, so I'm going to be making, what is this called? Tarragon, Tarragon the Gentle Dragon. Um, I don't, if this doesn't give you Puff the Magic Dragon vibes, I don't know what, that's just very sad. I, you just, it, Puff the Magic Dragon, everybody. Okay, so this is what Tarragon the Gentle Dragon looks like. He will be knit for my little nephew, and I'm so excited. Like, how cute is he? I'm so excited. It's a free pattern, can't go wrong. It's by Knit a Zoo, so I'm assuming they have other animal patterns as well. It's DK weight knit on a pretty size, or a pretty small size, three and four, or whatever, um, 130 yards to 150 yards. This is funny, I didn't read this little <laughs> blurb. <laughs> We're going to read this little blurb from the Ravelry Project page for just a second because it's pretty entertaining. I like this quite a lot. So, this is from, yes, the Ravelry Project page. Mythology or reality? The reality is that Tarragon is a dragon with a tender heart and an obscure predilection for French cuisine. He will only blow fire for barbecuing some sausages to eat with lots of onions and garlic sauce, one day to knit the second to love, but beware of his breath. I am very excited to know this little guy. Um, I'm also very excited to give it to Jonas because I know that he loves stuffed animals. And yes. So I got kind of like a mossy green for the dragon body and I have endless stash for the fun, um, the wings and the little spines. So that is very exciting. I am I haven't knit many stuffed animals, definitely haven't done it in a long time that are that small, or smaller anyway, I've done a lot of big ones. Um, so yeah, it'll be quite an adventure. I'm looking forward to it, and I could see myself making many of these in the future. So, fun times. That is my Christmas knitting plan. Now you all have been updated. Oh, man, I just... Um, feel real good about it. It'll be great. It'll be very good. I feel much better. Yes. Things are good. Things are very good in the Christmas department. Most definitely. Okay. <clears throat> so next up whew, is huge. Is massive. And I'm almost... What was that? <laughs> Just throwing stitch markers all over the place. Let's tuck that little guy away so he does not get lost. Um, this is my Starflake Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West, the marvelous genius Stephen West that he is. This is um, the fourth clue has come out this past Friday, so we are completely done. We will not be getting any more clues. It is no longer a mystery. We all know what it's going to look like. I've seen a couple that have been finished, and oh my goodness, it's just beautiful. Um, at this point, things have pretty much been spoiled. So, no spoilers, but also spoilers. Just be aware. I don't know. I'm getting ready to show mine. That's the point that I'm trying to make here. Um, here is my Starflake. And it's technically upside down. 
because I am currently knitting the bottom. Ta da! Looks great on the cord. Maybe I should just leave the needles in, you know? I have. Four more repeats, so eight more rows. And then I will be casting off in the I cord bind off, which is his favorite, as we all know, or seems like his favorite because everything he designs has it and takes forever. Takes eons! <laughs> um, but worth it. Most definitely worth it. And when you get in like a little groove, just flying away with your eye cord bind off. It can go quickly, it just seems like it takes forever. Um, I am very, very excited about this thing. I think it'll be super fun to wear. I am in love with my colors, like so much so. I am just so happy with this. I learned things. I messed up. Sometimes I fixed them, sometimes I didn't fix them. Most often, I didn't fix them. But that's okay, you know? There was one time where I did realize that I messed up and I did think seriously about leaving it, but didn't because I knew that it would throw everything off and I wouldn't like it, so that was good. Um, we did some glorified feather and fan, which if you had been watching the podcast for a long time, you would know that it is my favorite stitch in the entire world. No, that was very sarcastic. It is uh, most definitely not, and I find feather and fan very frustrating. <laughs> not because of the act of doing feather and fan or how it looks, because it looks beautiful. It's a very basic, wonderful pattern to follow. I could just never follow it correctly. I can never get it correct. I always mess up. Always. Always. And so, I just really have a love-hate relationship with Feather and Fan. And when I was looking at the pattern and I was like, oh wow, this is glorified Feather and Fan because it's been blown up to a bigger scale for 500 plus stitches. This will be fun. And thankfully, I only messed up once, which was the one time I did take it out because I knew that it would mess it up. Because that's the nature of Feather and Fan. You cannot hide your mistakes. Maybe that's why I don't like Feather and Fan, and you can't hide your mistakes. Mm, what does that say about me? I don't know. Oh well, deep thoughts for another time. <laughs> What does my opinion of feather and fan say about my knitting personality and wanting to fix my mistakes? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yes, I'm almost done. I have eight rows left. These rows are so long. They are so long. Ah, uh, like I can't even express to you how long they are. I know there are longer rows out there. I know there are. But these are in particular are just really long. And it get it's gotten to a point and I don't know if it's because like this is just so heavy on my needles or what or like I don't know why. But for some reason if I work on this for too long it starts hurting my hands and I'm like I'm not about that. I I'm very particular about my hands. If they're hurting, it's a no-go. Like, I don't, I don't want that. So I have, I've been working on it in very small chunks. Usually I'll do two rows and then I'll take a break. So, which is good because that's one repeat. So if I can do one row or do a repeat and then work on something else, then eventually I'll get it done. So, and now that my Santa's workshop is almost done, Hallelujah, because yay Christmas sweaters. Um, I will be pulling out other things that need to get done and have been most definitely neglected, which is very sad and I do not feel great about. Also, Christmas knitting, that is also a thing. Um, 
but I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to worry about it. It'll be fine. I planned it so it would not be stressful because you know what, people? This is not like I'm not going to be stressed about Christmas knitting. Life is too short to be stressed about Christmas knitting. And I know that wasn't me last year because I was knitting so much for Christmas. Managed to get it all done with time to spare if I remember correctly, but still, still. I wanted to prevent this, prevent that this year, and I think it will. I say that now, we'll see where I am in the, at the beginning of December. You know what, if I could manage to whip everything out in the month of November and have all of December for me knitting, that would be incredible. That's an idea. But I also do not want to, like, exclude all me knitting in November. I do not want to do that. Hmm. I have to plan things out. I have to see how long these things take me first. I think that would be a good place to start. <laughs> I'm basing this plan on no information that I have at all. That was a very well grammatically formed sentence. Hopefully you knew what I meant. Yeah, I'll see how long it takes me and see what I can do off of that. I have a text message from a number that I do not know. I have my face ID. What is that? Zip recruiter, I do not need you. I have a job. Please stop texting me. Okay. Um, so yes, this is my Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West for 2019. I loved doing it. I learned things. It was frustrating. I loved it. <laughs> Not all of it was frustrating, but there were times where I was like, why am I doing this? Why? 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 <laughs> In the moment, I feel like I needed to do that. I needed to express those thoughts. And in the end, I'm going to know that it was all worth it, for sure, most definitely. But in the moment, it's like, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing so much brioche? Why? I don't like that I have to knit the same row twice. I just don't like that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> rambly thoughts for me, again, we're getting a lot of those today. We got a lot of those last week, so I apologize double rambly thought weeks whatever um i'm using madeline tosh merino light this uh green is called librarian's dream and phantasm i have quite a bit left over um which is fine because uh i can use them in goodness knows what also he's coming to the modern skein he is coming to teach a class which is full on November 6th with a, which is a Wednesday but from 1 to 4 he there will be an open free to everyone meet and greet so if you are in the area whether it be in the near Houston area or far because I know there's a lot of people coming in from a far distance because it's Stephen West um feel free to come and meet him, bring books for him to sign, bring your favorite shawl of his that you've knit, or if you haven't knit anything of his, that's totally fine too. Um, I'm very excited. My mom and I will be taking a class, which is also really fun because my mom and I have not taken a knitting class together in forever, and I'm super excited about it because that's how we learn to knit. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, so because of the, the class that he's teaching. We are bringing a bunch of scraps from various shawls, weights, fibers, all that jazz. And I'm very excited to just see what he's gonna teach us, absorb all of his color knowledge. I'm excited, I think it'll be fun. I cannot wait to meet him. I have, I did find my first ever Stephen West shawl, which is pretty wonderful. So I have it. I love it. I love it dearly. 
Um, so yes, that is happening. We will be planning um, shawls of his to cast on after the class or to like get yarn for. Um, so my mom and I have decided on doing Cafe Knitting, which is a three color shawl. Um, and yeah, so I'm excited to kind of take what he teaches us in the class about color and putting colors together and put that into picking out yarn for this new shawl. So I've wanted to knit Cafe Knitting ever since it was released as the yarn in the yarn club like two years ago. And obviously the pattern was not available to the public and so I had to wait a long time and I, the time has not like made itself apparent when I needed to do that. But the time is now, the walrus said, to knit a shawl called Cafe Knitting <laughs> by Stephen West. <laughs> it's a very hip and cool walrus for sure. I'm sure Lewis Carroll would appreciate that comment. You know. <laughs> um, so yes, this is uh, really all I've been knitting, which like, like I said last week, I am, oh, I really need to like not have deadlines. I really need to allow myself to work on things and not feel bad about them even when I do have deadlines. And so now the only thing that will have a deadline is Christmas knitting. I will not allow any other knitting deadline to happen unless it's something like, well actually no that's not true, I need it, I have the sweater class that I'm teaching has a deadline. That is a thing. But it'll be different. <sighs> okay, that's the last thing. <laughs> Besides that, no more knitting deadlines. For the rest of the year at least okay we promise ourselves I promise myself no more deadlines if it's gonna be stressful life is too short knit what makes you happy knit things that do not bring stress to your life unless you really need to or you have to hmm but there's also cases where you think it won't bring you stress and then it actually does and you can't really help that so, just cope with it well. <laughs> Knit other things besides the deadline, knitting, or whatever that is causing you stress. It will make your life so much more happy. I promise it will. It will. You may think you don't have time, and you may think that it would be just way better if you just continue knitting on this thing that brings you stress and... Like you just need to knit a couple more rows because that'll give you one more inch and then you'll be closer to your thing, your, like your finish line and then you won't have to do as much tomorrow. But it's really not worth it. You know, you really got to take a break. You really have to stop, step back a little bit and then be like, okay, this thing is frustrating. I need to work on something else. I need to work on something that literally like actually brings me joy. Okay? feel very strongly about this. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. So please do that for the sake of your knitting mojo, your knitting life, just general happiness of knitting mind. Break it up. Do not force yourself to knit just on like one thing to get it done. Unless that deadline is just really, really close and you have to power through even then, stop and knit like one row on something that you love. It will make you feel so much better. I promise. I promise. It's been a very motivational episode it, that took a drastic turn talking about Christmas presents to <laughs> don't stress your, yourself out with knitting. Although I, I suppose it's kind of in the same line of thought. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. Knitting is knitting. Do what makes you happy. 
if it stresses you out, take a break. Your hands and your mind will thank you for sure. For sure. And I need to do a better job at that. That was a, a speech to you just as it was to me. Um, so, yes. Um, I don't know where to transition to after that. So, let's take a tea break, shall we? Let's have a little sip of your beverage or your snack or whatever you have. Fold some more socks or some shirts or whatever. And it will all be better. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, books wise, I, okay, so this is kind of funny. This also kind of goes hand in hand a little bit, a little bit with maybe burnout is what we could say. Um, so I definitely experienced burnout from test knitting this year, for sure, for sure. Not because the test knits were like, I don't know, I love test knitting, but you do too many of them, you don't have time to knit other things. Um, I put the pressure on myself to knit, or knit, uh, to read as many, like, thriller, mystery, spooky, scary books in the month of October as I possibly could. And as a result of that, I experienced great burnout of these types of books. And it got to a certain point where it was like, I can't handle this anymore. I need to stop. <laughs> so I did. And then I read the most, like, I don't know. I think they're called cozy mysteries. It was very ridiculous. So many holes in the plot line and the really very odd mystery. But it was exactly what I needed and it was just so wonderful. It was so short. It only had nine chapters. I got it, I got the, a set of three from Amazon for 99 cents thanks to BookBub, which if you don't know what that is, I highly recommend you check it out. If you are an ebook reader, it will change your life um, because it tells you books that are on sale from various places like Barnes and Noble and Amazon and iTunes and stuff. Um, it's very wonderful. And they also do box sets sometimes for so you can get like three of them for, like I said, 99 cents. It was great. Um, so yeah. It was pretty ridiculous. I don't even remember what it was called. But, yeah. I am definitely going to read the second and third one because it was just so entertaining. And... It was, it just brought so much joy and laughter, maybe not for the right reason that the book was wanting or whatever, but it's very entertaining. I then read parts of it aloud to Sam because he was doing something, I don't remember what he was doing, so then we were having a laugh about the commentary of this book and it was just very entertaining. Um, and there was something else. Oh, yes, and so then, for some reason, the, actually not for some reason, I do know why. So several of the booktuber people that I follow on YouTube, I've mentioned this before, they are reading through Harry Potter right now, and I don't know if it's just like them being really excited about it, and then also it being fall, and like Christmas, and like I know it's a cozy story, and also having not actually read all the books before, I read at least the first two, Probably like three or four times. I haven't gotten past book two. <laughs> but I will get it past book two this time because I started book one last night. I'm about halfway through already. It's pretty great. Loving it. And what's also cool is that I have a box set of the books that we were able to find at my parents' house last night because we went to watch the Astros game with them, which is a whole other discussion, everybody! What? There's just so many... I thought I had nothing to talk about, but I really just... that was not the case. And here we are. Bouncing all over the place. <laughs> 
That was a rhyme. Didn't mean for it to be a rhyme, but it was. Um, so yes, I'm currently reading Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, book one, for the fifth time. Um, so yes, that's exciting. I look forward to getting past book two. Um, and yes, I do, this is an odd experience for me because I, it's been a long time since I've actually read a book that I hold, which I know, I know a lot of book lovers out there are like, but I just love holding a book and I love smelling the book and believe me, I'm on the same page. I have a bookcase over here that you can't see that is stuffed with books. My parents still have a fair amount of my books that I had when I was living at home that I do not have because I do not have space for them. I love books. I love holding books. But if I'm holding a book, I can't knit, which is the downside. And so I'm taking, I was actually thinking about this today while I was reading Harry Potter. It was very wonderful. Um, I was thinking that not knitting while reading Harry Potter allows me to kind of like really rest and really just kind of enjoy the story and really not... I don't need to be multitasking. I don't need to be doing both at the same time. I do love doing both at the same time, but I don't have to. And I feel like this is just kind of a slow down, it's okay, I don't need to be doing everything at once. <laughs> because like for real though, in all honesty, it's gotten to a point where I, if I am not like knitting while I'm reading or reading while I'm knitting, it feel I feel like I'm wasting my time, which is a very sad thing to say, and this is very like a transparent moment here. But like, that's not how I should be thinking about knitting or reading. This is a hobby that I enjoy. I should not be feeling bad about wasting my time that I'm not doing one or the other, or both at the same time. So reading Harry Potter as a physical book is a, um, an exercise for me, if you will, to slow down, not worry about it, just kind of relax, enjoy the story, get back past book two, see how far I can get into the series. I am really excited about it. I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, so just really sharing all the information about how I'm feeling about my knitting on a deeper level here. I don't know. It just kind of came out of nowhere. We started off tired and here we are. So the, the pep talk must have really worked. <laughs> um, so that's my books. Um, in regards to baking, we have done some fun baking. Last Saturday, or this past Saturday, um, I did not have work, which was really fun, so Sam and I got to sleep in a little bit, and then we made cinnamon rolls together, which is super fun. I had not made cinnamon rolls from scratch in a long time, and Sam had never done it. Her, he probably, maybe he has, I don't know, but it was our first time doing it together, I should say that. So that was super fun. Um, it was really super easy. They were, it's like cinnamon rolls in an hour or something and that includes like the raising like it had yeast in it so it includes like the proving and the the raising rising whatever very official super good would most definitely do it again um yeah it was just really great so i will include that link in the show notes haven't done any baking since I don't really have any plans to do it this week just because, I don't know. I do have some bananas that will potentially be coming ripe, be coming ripe soon. So that could potentially turn into banana bread, but I don't know. And then everybody, I keep picking up my tea like I'm going to take a drink and then I don't and I put it down. Everybody, we have a cold front coming. Yay. Here's the weather discussion of the episode. We were lacking that. Although we did talk about that a little bit in the intro. We have a cold front coming. Um, it's coming Wednesday night. The high on Thursday, which is Halloween. The high, as of right now, is only 54. 
only 54. That's the high. What? <laughs> Time to pull out all the big puffer jackets and the snow boots because it will definitely snow. I know it won't, but we act like it will. Um, turn on the heater. We probably will turn on the heater, actually. I don't really know. Anyway, so I am um, going to make soup. I'm going to make potato soup in the crock pot. I don't know how it's going to go. And by the time you watch this, I will not have, or by the time this comes out, I still will not have made the soup. So I don't know whether to include the recipe in the show notes because I don't know if it's a good recipe or not. I will include it anyway, just in case. But, um, I mean, it, you can't really go wrong with potato soup, right? I don't think so. Um, I have like a hand immersion blender, which is very wonderful. It's very cute. It's like mint green, and I very rarely use it. So when we have cold fronts where the high is only 54, it's time to make soup, you know? And if you can use the crock pot at any point to make things just so easy, then why not? Just go ahead and do it, right? Yes. Do you have any favorite soup recipes? Everybody had wonderful button opinions, so if you have a favorite soup recipe of some sort, please share it with me. I would love to hear. I know very little about making soup. <laughs> I don't know why that statement is very funny, but for some reason it is. I know very little about making soup. Soup seems like a very simple thing. I don't know why I thought that was funny, but apparently it was. Maybe you laughed too, I don't know. If you didn't, I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here laughing to myself at this point. Um, but yes, yeah, so soup is happening. I don't know very much about soup, but I will be making it. And if you have any soup recipes that you would like to share with me, whether they be in the crock pot or not, if they're in the crock pot, extra points. But if not, that's also fine. Um, so, yes, let me know in the comments, please, and thank you. <clears throat> so, everybody, I think that's it. Somehow, with only having two projects to talk about, I still got 53 minutes of footage. Granted, I talked about so many other things, but still, you know, but still pretty great. So yes, I think that is all. I just realized that I had some little acquisitions this week um, that I really want to show everybody because they are so cute. Like I can't even. Um, so I ordered these a while ago. I think I ordered these about a month ago. And it was like a day that I was having I was a rough day or it was a rough week or something like that and I had a little bit of spending money and so I treated myself to some progress keepers by someone that I have been following for forever and I love her progress keepers. She also posts, I love it when people do this, when progress or like stitch marker people do this, when they post videos of them making them and everything's just like so little and the, the detail and the precision is just like, I love this. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, so I ordered two progress keepers and now they're stuck in my knitting. I ordered two progress keepers from Little Bitty Delights. That is her business name. That is her username on Instagram. So please, please, please go check her out. She'll be in the show notes for sure. Oh man, she was... Um, she had posted pictures of a pumpkin pie slice and also a PSL, a pumpkin spice latte. And I was like, oh man, that's just so cute. At the time, I didn't think I had any spending money, but I actually did. And so, but I went to go look. I went to go see if she had any in her shop because she just said she had had a, a shop update and they were all sold out. 
and I was like, oh, dang it. Oh well, that's okay. It just wasn't meant to be. That's fine. No worries. It's okay. And then a couple days later, for some reason, I decided to check again, and she had them. And I was like, oh, oh, it is meant to be. It is a sign. I have to act now. And so I did. <laughs> spontaneous purchases it worked out in my favor so I actually opted for a caramel latte opposed to a pumpkin spice latte because I got the pumpkin pie slice and this is gonna be kind of hard to show you how do I do this um, let's try it this way actually I'll just show you one at a time how about that okay so here's the pumpkin pie slice Is that not so cute? Like, look at that. She handmade that. That is just so amazing. It looks like pump a pumpkin pie slice. It's just so cute. So that's the first one. And here's my little caramel latte. It's just so cute in the little mug and it's got a caramel drizzle on top which is like the best part oh I just love it so much and she's just so sweet she's constantly doing fun little Instagram stories um, and yeah she's just super sweet so I would highly recommend going and checking out her stitch markers and just all of her stuff it's incredible it is so high quality, handmade, just wonderful. And seasonal stitch markers, progress keepers, they don't have to be seasonal, you can use them all year round, but just having something a little bit seasonal just brings so much joy into my heart. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I just love it so much. So, yes, I wanted to make sure to show those to you guys, and I'm sorry I forgot earlier, because they were hanging out on my mystery knit along, not necessarily marking progress, um, but just because I didn't have a place to put them and I wanted them to be safe. Um, but yes, little bitty delights, not itty bitty delights, but little bitty delights on Instagram and on Etsy. And I'm sure other places as well. So please go check her out. All of her information will be in the show notes. So yes, happy days. So now that is all. Now that is all that I have for you. Um, it was a good episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching. I know that there are so many knitting podcasts out there that are more organized, have more stuff to talk about are not nearly as ranty and ravey, don't always talk about the weather, also don't really talk about the Astros. <laughs> Maybe you're into that, I don't know. Maybe you enjoy it. Um, but thank you for choosing my my podcast to come and hang out with me, spend times, comments with button suggestions, and coupon versus coupon, which gave me a laugh, so thank you so much for that. Um, let me know your soup suggestions. If you have any, that would be wonderful. I'm always looking for fun new recipes to try. So, fun times. Um, if you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. I'm most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there. I will hopefully have my sticking stuff up on the Instagram, and if not, well actually it for sure will, but if you happen to miss that or something or you don't know where it is, then next week's episode should have sticking footage in it because I will be bringing my camera and stuff to record because it's monumental. You don't not document when you cut your knitting open. <laughs> Regardless of how many times you've done it, it always deserves to be documented, right? Because everybody loves watching people cut their knitting open. I don't know what it is. Like, it's just... Everybody can live vicariously through whoever's steaking and just feel the thrill of snipping the scissors through your stitches. 
I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that information and that stuff will be up this coming week. Um, hopefully when you watch this or when this count comes up, there will be stuff up already. And if not, next week. Next Wednesday. So, which is confusing because today is Monday for me. But we all, it's, it's different how that works out. But anyway, that is totally irrelevant. Um, if you are interested in any of the things that I have talked about, like the recipes, the little bitty delights, all that jazz, please go check them out. All that stuff will be in the show notes, which is on my blog, or if you're on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below. Um, in addition, all the social media, all the yarn store information, all that jazz will be in the show notes. If I have failed to include anything, or if you just have questions about things in general, please feel free to send me a message um, on Instagram. I'm most likely to reply. Um, so yes. Or you just want to say hello. That is wonderful. I do apologize. I'm not always good at replying to comments on YouTube. That is a New Year's resolution. It's going to happen. I will be better. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm going to say that publicly here. I'm going to try, you know. Um, so yes, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. If you are rooting for the Astros, go you. I, we are on the same team. I hope we do well. If you are on the Nationals team, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope for like your joy and happiness that you guys do well, but also as an Astros fan, I want us to do well. Um, I just hope that we're all happy in the end, which is the most nine thing I could say. Um. <laughs> if you're enjoying college football, hopefully you'll get some knitting done during the games on the weekends. I know I am. We have a an upcoming tailgate to go to, which I'm super excited about. It's an alumni tailgate, which kind of makes me feel old, but that's okay. It'll be fun. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been to an A&M football game. So that is very exciting. Um, I don't know what if I'll bring, I'm, you know, bring knitting. I don't know how I'll, how I'll handle that. I'll figure it out. It's not important right now. Um, probably be a subject for next week's podcast, you know. Um, so yes, here's to you, here's to me for not stressing about our knitting this week, working on Christmas projects, but also again not stressing about it, making sure that you're knitting things that bring you joy, even if it's just a couple stitches. It's very important. It's very important. So, Knit things that <laughs> knit things that bring you joy. That is what I am sharing with the world. If you go away with one thing from this podcast, that is what I want you to go away with. So anyway, that is all that I have for you guys this week. Knit things that bring you joy. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.